And good evening. Welcome to WOSN's coverage of high school baseball. We're in the Northwest Conference tonight, and we have a good one between the Leipzig Vikings and the defending champion Lincoln View Lancers. Garrett Bantu alongside Scoop Miller. Scoop, good to be with you out here. Great facility here at Leipzig, and hopefully we have a good enough of a ball game to highlight it as well. Well, I think we will. You know, these two teams last year finished one and two in the Northwest Conference with, uh, of course, uh, Lincoln View coming out on top. They blanked Lipsic 4-0 in Lincoln View. This is the first ever trip for Lincoln View to Lipsic, just being Lipsic's second year in the Northwest Conference. So I think we're in for Danny. I think we're going to see some quality pitching today. And I know both teams would love to see maybe the bats break out here with the warmer weather. Yeah, you you mentioned the the year that was 15 and eight finish second or a six and two for Lipsick a year ago 24 and a seven and eight eight and zero oh state runner up finish as well for the Lancers. That's the second year in a row they've gotten to Akron and in the uh, the, the maximum amount of games as you can play scoop and they've had a storybook run the last couple of years under head coach Eric Fishpaw and but they got some new faces some graduates that have moved on and they've they're still trying to obviously keep the ball rolling. Dane Ebel, though, one of the, the holdovers from the last couple of years. He'll lead things off, and it'll be Luke Spears into the circle for the Lipsick Vikings. And Spears is on the rubber, and we're set to have our first pitch of the night. He winds it up, and Spears delivers, and it's fouled on back. Ebel is pitching for Lincoln View. Here's the rest of their lineup. Caden Hamp is the DH hitting second. Austin Bachrath will be third. Jack Dunlap hits cleanup. Brandon Redder hits fifth. Miles Moody is sixth. Seventh is the second baseman, Evan Miller. Chase Overholt is in the eighth spot and Holden Price rounds out the lineup as a another strike taken from Spurs to Ebel here. We'll get you the elliptic defense here in the top of the first. On its way. And it's a breaking ball that stays high. It's Adam Lombers at first base. Isaiah Carnarino is at second. Tyler Lombers at short. Tommy Offenbacher at third. Caleb Ellerbrock at left. Trent Skeeper in center. And Ethan Seitzloff in right. Quinn Schrader doing the catching for the Vikings here this afternoon. 1-2 remains after foul ball for Ebel. And setting the tone of this game out of the left-hand side. Spores delivers, and it's rocketed into center. Long run to his right for the center fielder, Seifker, and Ellerbrock to his left. Neither will get there. It splits the alley and a stand-up double to start the day for Dane Ebel. Yeah, tremendous at bat there by Ebel. He took the fifth pitch of that at bat, fought, fouled off a couple tough pitches, drives it to the gap there left center. You can see right away why he was one of those first-team Northwest Conference performers a year ago. And that'll bring in the number two hitter, the DH, Caden Hamp. He hits for the right fielder, Trey Evans. And Spurs out of the stretch for the first time, showing bunt, pulling it back, and it is low. So Spurs falls behind. Lipsick keeps the runner, or the corners pinched in. As Ebel gets off a second, here it comes in, and the bunt gets down, but it's going to be foul. That'll be strike one, even the count up, 1-1. One, one. Right now, if you're Caden Hanf, you want to try to get that bunt down to third base. Try to force third baseman Tommy Offenbacher to come in, make the play, have to go to first base. Try to get that run to the third with less than two outs. And here comes the 1-1 one -one out of Spores. And it's bunted halfway back toward the mound. Spores has it. His only play will be to first a high throw, but Lommers keeps it down. The sacrifice is complete. It goes 1-3. One away for Lincoln View. Brings Austin uh, Bachrath to the plate. Plays third base today. And Scoop, you have first inning. You lead off double and you want to bunt that guy over. You know, why not sit back and swing with all three outs to go with when maybe a, a ball in play does just that job? I think right now both coaches have so much respect for the other team's pitching staff. I think you may see... Both these teams maybe try to play for a run, even though it's early in the ball game. A lot of times you try to go for that crooked number. You know, right now going against a guy like Luke Spores, who has a lot of big game experience, you'd like to get to him early. I think that's probably the thinking of Eric Fishpaul right now. And it's going to be Spores falling behind 2-0. Here it comes. 
And Bachrath with a hit up the middle, and it takes a ricochet off the field umpire, and that's going to have the ball go down dead. We'll put Bachrath at first base with the single, and both Coach Fishpaul and Coach Henry come on out, and he pops right back up. And well, that ball was a rocket off the bat of Bachrath there. Just no time for the umpire to get out of the way. That's going to end up being a base hit RBI for Bachrath. And nice to see the blue get back up on his feet. And right now, I haven't seen him rub it either, so that's a good sign as well. <laughs> Yeah, it must have shaken it off pretty easy. And now getting his bearings, it looks like everybody is a-okay. But he had the jacket on, too, so he had that little bit of extra layer. Maybe it was made out a little bit more than cotton, polyester, and some thread. Maybe it had some Kevlar in there to lighten the blow. But back at it. one nothing. Lincoln View after all of that. One away, and... Runner on first base is Austin Bachrath. Jack Dunlap stands in. The first baseman to hit cleanup. And I'll throw over by Spoors. All right, now the Lancers get some awfully good swings against Spoors early on. And that's something that's going to be a key, you know. Talking to uh, Lipsick coach uh, Darren Henry before the game, he thought the biggest key for Spores was going to be maybe getting through that first inning. He, he's a guy that typically gets stronger as the game wears on. But right now, uh, credit to Lincoln View. They've got to him early here with one run and just one out. And now you want to be greedy. Try to find a way to scratch across another run here, put up a crooked number here to start things out. Yeah, another left-handed bat in. There's that. Whole left side of the infield pretty wide open as Dunlap takes one low to even the count back up to one and one. All right, now you have to love the approach from Lincoln Views. Very aggressive, yet they're staying in the zone. That's going to be so important. You have a guy like uh, Luke Spores. He's too good to expand the zone against. You have to stay disciplined, stay within the uh, strike zone. And as they always say, good hitters hit good pitches. So right now you're looking for something in the zone you can drive. And that 1-1 one, one pitch, just a hair outside. St. Enter in the day, Lincoln View. Five victories to one loss, just suffered their first of the year to Wayne Trace. That's a pretty good club over there in Paulding County. Not too far away from Lancer Land. And we got a 3-1 count, and time already called, and a little mid at bat. Conference on the mound here for Link or for Lipsick to chat over the situation. Yeah, right now I don't think Lipsick's real happy with the tight strike zone. It's been very consistent, but but again, really not getting those uh, that buffer zone there just off the edge like a lot of guys like to get. So right now, if you're Lipsick, you have to make that adjustment. You know, it's going to be that way for both teams. You have to make the adjustment, but you also have to make that adjustment if you're the hitter as well, because you don't have to swing at those marginal strikes, especially early in the count. Maybe sit for something that's across the plate and try to drive the uh, baseball. All right, 3-1 and another throw over. Spores can't get to Bachrath. Double sacrifice and a single. The sequence early for the Lancers, and 3-1 goes up and away, and Dunlap draws a one-out walk. Ah, great job by the junior, Jack Dunlap that time. Again, laid off some of those pitches just off the edge there a little bit. He's able to work the count in his favor. Gets the first walk of the afternoon against Spores. And now Spores uh, trying to minimize things here with runners at first and second, one out. Yeah, it's Brandon Renner. And again, another lefty at the top of this lineup. Takes one in the dirt. 2-1 there for uh, Lincoln View in this first. A lot of action on the base pass early. Spores delivers, and breaking ball hits the outside edge, evens it up at 1-1. Now, Brandon Renner, one of those six guys out here tonight uh, for Lincoln View that started that state championship game a year ago where they came up a little bit short against uh, Rushi. And that goes in tight, 2-1. and one. 
See, Spores is looking for some rhythm early. A look back at a action of the play comes in tight. 3 1 and moves. Yeah, I really like what Lincoln View's doing. You know, they've seen the, the small zone, so they're really not, not uh, any hurry to go up there and swing at the first thing they see. They now have another three ball count. So it's hit in the air, foul off to the left side. Count goes to three and two. See what the Lancers do here on the base paths. Coach Fishball's going to give them a head start or, or to sit tight here. Next pitch in, and Renner with a slow roller past the mound. That should be an infield hit, and it is. About as well placed as you could have that go for Brandon Renner. It got on the grass and slowed it down and scooted past the hill. Enough for Renner to speed up first base and fill the sacks for Miles Moody. Uh, great at bat that time by Renner. You know, he worked the count full, four spores to throw it over the plate, and even though spores made a pretty good pitch, that ball was perfectly placed. Once it got by spores, infield hit all the way, and now the bases are juiced. First pitch goes up and away to Moody. Right-hand swinger, the infielders all in the corners at the cut of the grass to cut down a, the runner to home. Middle infield push back to play for two, 1-0. Spores' pitch has popped up foul near the first base dugout, giving chases the first baseman, Adam Lommer, as he makes the snag in foul ground. That's a huge out for Spores, and something we talked about pregame scoop. Well, there's a lot of foul ground, and Lipsick played it to their home advantage right there. Yeah, tremendous job there by Adam Lommer's coming over, calling off the catcher, Quinn. Schrader on that, and good heads up there by Luke Spores, who recognized home plate was vacated, so he went covered home just in case there's a tag up from third base. And the first pitch, slow on the ground towards second base. Evan Miller going to be thrown out by his counterpart, Isaiah Conorino. That retires the side. In the top of the first, but Lipsick fills him up, gets one out of it. We head to the home half of the first. It's one nothing Lincoln View on the Charles River scoreboard on WOSN. Back at Lipsick, Northwest Conference baseball continues. Here on WOSN, Lincoln View out in the field on the bottom of the first inning with a 1-0 lead. Lipsick leading things off with Quinn Schrader, Tommy Offenbacher, and Jeremy Tavares, the designated hitter, 1-2-3. Get to the rest of that lineup here in a second as Dane Ebel up on the hill. He'll work right out of the stretch for the Lancers, kicking his first pitch. He is taking a strike low in the zone. With the hard stuff, the rest of that lineup for Lipsick. Four through nine, Ethan Seisloff, Caleb Auerbrock, followed by Tyler Lommers. Adam Lommers hits seventh. Trent Seifer is in the eighth spot, and Luke Spoor is the pitcher, batting ninth. One and one already here. And Schrader pops one up foul behind home. Catcher Miles Moody gave it a look. It's going to be strike number two. The rest of the Lincoln View defense, Jack Dunlap at first, Evan Miller at second. Chase Overholt, the shortstop. The third baseman's Austin Bachrath. In the outfield, Brandon Renner at left. Holden Price in center. Trey Evans is in right. Abel buries a pitch here, and it's swung and missed by Schrader and thrown to first by the catcher, Miles Moody. The Dunlap and concludes the first out of the home half of inning one to bring Offenbacher up. A great start for Dane Ebel. Again, the key for him is get those first pitch strikes, get hitters in negative counts where he can maybe expand the zone as we saw right there. Yeah, time called before the first delivery to Offenbacher. Lincoln View got one at the top of the first. Could have been more, but a big wiggle out for the Vikings as first pitch delivered and taken a strike. <laughs> Three left on in that first. We'll circle that finish of the inning and see if it comes back to factor in later as Ebel delivers low. Vikings on the year with a record of one and three and a season opening win over Continental and a stiff competition with losses to Tenor, Crestview, and Edgerton. 
Next offering taken a little low. They do have a game against Fort Jennings that is scoreless and suspended in the eighth. About the attempt to make that one up at some point, maybe. If they can find a date. Next pitch is taken. That moves the count back to 2-2. Two -two. Uh, great spot by Ebo once again. He's a guy that does a great job working both sides of the plate. There he paints a fastball right on the outer edge. Here's the two-strike pitch. So just got a piece of it popped off the mid of Moody. And Offenbacher stays alive at 2-2. Two -two. And Ebo last season was able to uh, defeat Lipsick in the regional as he was very impressive. That goes a little low to fill the count. As he recorded 10 strikeouts, just one earned run in that regional semi-final victory at Patrick Henry. And here comes the payoff. A little flinch by Offenbacher, but it's in the zone. Called for strike three. Uh, great job once again by Ebo. And again, he's so successful when he can get on top of the hitters there, get that first pitch strike. He's done that two times now. He has two punch outs here. Looking for a one, two, three inning here to start things out for the Lancers. Jeremy Tavares is in. The designated hitter with a big swing and a foul back. You mentioned Ebel going in the semifinal with the services of Landon Price at the time. You know, that this was the perfect opportunity or perfect example. Next pitch goes up high of how in, at this at this level, when you have two of that nature, you, you can be tough to stop. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's been a deadly one-two combination uh, for area teams the last couple of years, and certainly Ebel more than capable of filling that number one slot this season. Remember, he pitched the uh, – Lancers to that state championship game where he uh, pitched the semifinal where he threw a one-hitter with 11 strikeouts, just one walk at uh, Canal Park there in Akron. Breaking ball, Tavares. Great job staying back on the off-speed and sending it the other direction. That's a good piece of hitting for Tavares. A little flick of the wrist and a single in the shallow right. You don't see that kind of hitting at this level all the time. And you know, Tavares, if it was, you know, whatever you, you throw into it, whatever you factor in, that is the result, exactly what you want to see on a two-strike breaking ball. You're exactly right. Tremendous piece of hitting there by Tavares. Kept his hands back. Had a tough pit with two strikes he had to go after. Did a nice job of not trying to do too much. Laced it in the right field. Lipsic has her first hit of the afternoon. 0-1 oh, to Zeislaw, fouled off, and it's quickly in the 0-2 hole. Caleb Eller-Brock would hit next if he can continue the inning. Vikings with their first base runner of the day. And Ebel kicks and fires in. Backs up Zeislaw just a touch. That's a great 0-2 pitch right there. That pitch had a purpose. And, you know, he threw it off the plate, but he also threw it close enough where it was competitive right off that inside edge. And I'll look for him to uh, tack it down low here. And he goes on the outer edge, taken for a called third strike and three strikeouts in the inning. Around a two-out single, Dane Ebel is able to get out of the first with the one nothing lead intact. We had it for the second from Lipsick of WOSN. Welcome back to Lipsick, where it's 1-0 Lincoln View on the Charles River scoreboard. Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They are expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. Luke Spores delivers a first pitch strike to Chase Overholt to start this second frame. Big inning for Spores after getting out of a bases loaded jam in the first. Scoop, we'll see how he comes back here with a, a clean slate right now. Yeah, I think it's going to be important. He did a great job of, of minimizing things in that first inning just to give up the one run. He induces a pop-up right behind second base. 
Cantorino backs up in the shallow right center to take care of it. That's three in a row retired by Spores after the bases got filled up in the first. Yeah, great job by Spores. And again, his key is just like uh, I think his counterpart, Ebo, get those first pitch strikes, you know, where you have a chance to maybe work uh, both the inside and outer edge. That's a big first out right there. Here's Holden Price, the number nine hitter. And he snaps off a breaking ball, goes low and away. We're seeing different styles, obviously. You know, not a not a ton of Dane Ebels around the area that can throw hard, put it right where he wants it, get the breaking ball here. So Spoor is a little bit more of the finesse. Got to be able to capitalize on location, and he gets a fly out to right off the bat of Price, and that supports the, the point I was trying to make there. And He's not going to shy away from contact. He just wants to make sure you make bad contact and you get out. So, well, Garrett, you're exactly right. You know, you know, Dane Ebel, he's going to hit 88, 89 mile hours on that fastball. He's going to get some punch outs. On the flip side here, Spores, he has to get guys to hit his pitch. He, don't have, he doesn't have to throw it by guys. He has to get guys off balance, keep them out of rhythm. So he's been very effective over the years. He's one of those three-pitch mix guys. He'll mix in the change-ups, got a nice curveball. A decent fastball that he can locate when he's got all three working. He, you know, it's going to be tough math putting runs up against him. Falls behind Ebel here, 2 0. Second out bound for Ebel, doubled and scored in the first. And the 2 0 pitch. Breaking ball is going to find the bottom of the zone. 2 and 1. Yeah, we saw a tremendous at bat back to start things out by Dane Ebel. He took the fifth pitch of the bat to lace the double to left center. There he takes a good looking fastball right on the outer edge, right at the knees. You know, that's a pitch on 2-1. That's probably a good hold right there. Not much you're going to do with it. Now with two strikes, you have to have that two strike approach expand the zone a little bit. Here it comes. Ebel hits it pretty well, but he's going to hang up there at right. And Ethan Zeisloff back to back snags out in right field to conclude the top of the second inning, a one, two, three half for Luke Spoors. We add for the home half of the second on WOSN. Lincoln views half of, make that the Lipstick half of the second inning. On the offensive end, Caleb Eller, Brock Tyler, Lommers, Adam Lommers, the three do to face Dane Ebel. Worked around a two out single in the first inning. That's where we stand, one nothing on the Charles River scoreboard. First delivery for the righty to the left hand of batting Eller Brock, down and in. Second year round in the Northwest Conference for Lipsick. 1 0 pitch, called a strike, and the last team, not named Lincoln View, to win the league, is the team they replaced. Holding Panthers back in 2019. Lincoln View has won each Northwest Conference title since then, 2021, 2022. Got a 1-0 start this year. Yeah, those back-to-back -back titles for Lincoln View were their third and fourth in school history. Well behind Crestview, who leads for most titles with 23. And the 2-1, Ellerbrock fouls it off. And after that, uh, current members, you have to go down to uh, seven by Columbus Grove. That's uh, who's chasing Crestview right now. They've got a ways to go. And the team you mentioned, Paulding, who's now in the GMC, they have 15 Northwest Conference uh, baseball titles over their history. Swing and a miss there to Ellerbrock. Makes the two and two, and that that's really deepened out that conference in the baseball side. Already Tenora, Wayne Trace, Antwerp. Throw Paulding in there. Ayersville has had a lot of great teams down through the years. Actually, Coach Fishball for Lincoln View. He was one of those on one of those Ayersville teams. Not Coldwater out of the tournament one year. Well, you're right. The GMC this year is going to be awfully deep. You know, all those teams right there would love to find themselves at the top of the leaderboard at the end of the season. I think uh, Edgerton, uh, 
It's had some good baseball there over the years as well. Another team in the GMC that, uh, you know, it's just going to be a dogfight, which I think the Northwest Conference is going to be as well, especially with these two teams. The, the history both these programs have had, they both have won state titles. Of course, Lincoln View's coming, I think, uh, what, 61 years ago, way back in the day. And uh, I think you mentioned it earlier, Lipsick, uh, back in 1976, uh, won it all. Two strikes. And Tyler Lammers comes up empty on a Dan Ebel fastball. That's already five, all five outs recorded by Ebel with the punch out. And again, he's a high strikeout guy. You know, we've talked about that last year. Incredible numbers he put up. He had a six to one strikeout walk ratio in the season. I mean, if you get two or three to one, boy, those are good numbers. You're talking six to one. It's just incredible. There he's got a nice bender there to quickly get on top of Adam Lammers 0 and 1. So two, or, uh, two outs quickly for the Vikings. Abel delivers. Same location, but not going to be the same result. He's got the home plate umpire this time, hopping away from some contact. Well, now whole crew has kind of taken a lick, and hopefully that's hopefully we're done with that. On the good side of things, at least it's 70 degrees out here today and not 40 degrees yep. where you're taking some shots from that uh, five-ounce pill out there. <laughs> but either way, I'm sure it's going to sting a little bit. But uh, nice to see these guys both back in it. And the 1-1. One -one. Fastball dotted and taken for a strike. Yeah, that's just a tremendous pitch. You know, he's got a 1-1 pitch, which is the biggest pitch in baseball. You either fall behind as a pitcher 2-1 and one, or you get to hit her in a negative count at 1-2. and two. Fought off and Lombards will stay in there at 1-2. It's just incredible right now how Ebel's really hitting his spots. He's not throwing one across the heart of the plate. He's gone for the black on the outside. He's gone for the black on the inside. He's kept it downstairs. And the next offering... Breaking ball stays up high. He, he wanted the call. It's kind of where he wanted it. Yeah, quality miss. You know, he's really hitting spots. You know, when you get hitters in negative counts, you can try to nibble on things, try to get guys to expand the zone, but you want to avoid the three ball count. So you need to tack right here on 2 2, and that one way upstairs. So great job right now by Adam Lommers. He has worked the count full here. And with Evil going up and down. Working everywhere in the zone. Lommers got to lock in here to see where this one's going to be. And he's right down the pipe and fouled off. Yeah, tremendous job once again. He's able to uh, fight that pitch off. He'll now see the eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up here. Payoff pitch one more time. So Evil straightens and delivers. Taken called strike three, a little break on its way in, and Adam flinched, and well, when you do that, sometimes it's already too late. One, two, three, go to Vikings in the bottom of the second. Still one nothing Lincoln View on the Charles River scoreboard as we head to the third. Caden Hamp, Austin Buckrat, Jack Dunlap. Lincoln do Lancers to start their half of the third inning. And this is a line shot to third. And fair down the line it goes for Hanf. He turns first hard and will hold there with a lengthy single. Good chase down by Ellerbrock out in left field for Lipsick to make sure that held to one base. But right inside the line, a tight rope to third. That will be the fourth hit of the game for Lincoln View. Uh, two great plays right there. The first, a tremendous swing from Hanf there. Hits a bullet down that left field line just inside the uh, chalk. But a tremendous play, as you mentioned, Garrett, by Caleb Ellerbrock out there in left field. Hanf was thinking two all the way out of the box. But tremendous play there by the southpaw left fielder. Keeps Hanf at first base, keeps the double play in order. Yeah, you mentioned being left-handed. and That makes it even better because he has to not only get to that baseball, but turn the body going the other direction to make sure that throw comes into the infield. Bachrath swings through the, the first pitch from Spoors. Luke Spoors 
Got out of the bases loaded, one out spot in the first that held Lincoln View to one run. One, two, three, went the Lancers in the second. Got two fly outs to right field and a pop up. And this is the part of the order that helped load the sacks in the first. Bachrath with a sack bunt his, or they, that hand for a sack bunt his first time through, but Bachrath. One for one with a single. He was left at first, or left at, left at third. He had the RBI hit to bring in Dane Ebel, too. Next pitch. He kind of flinched with those hands and takes a strike from Spores. Yeah, good look at hammer that time from Spores. See, it will start the ball a little bit out of the zone. Nice uh, late break to it. Another toss over and a Dive back by Hamp. He'll get off the base. Spores will straighten up, gives a peek, and now comes to the plate, stays high with a breaking ball. That didn't quite get that one snapped off completely. Count moves to two balls, two strikes. Another throw over. Uh, good job by Sports. You have to keep that double play in order. Only five ways to score from first base, 25 ways to score from second. Awfully big. You keep him right there. Next offering down low, scooped by the Kentra Quinn Schrader. Uh, tremendous play by Schrader. You know, that time, uh, half wanted to get a dirt ball read, try to get in the scoring position. But a great pick there by Schrader. Keeps that double play in order again. This bounce to third. Up with it, Offenbacher is only plays the first and just does get Bachrath up the line. But Bachrath able to move the runner, though, so it still is a productive first out. Yeah, great battle that time by Bachrath there. He's able to uh, move Hanf in the scoring position. Nice job at third base by Offenbacher. He was thinking to uh, try to go to second on that. He bobbled it. And to his credit, did not hesitate once he bobbled, went right to first base, and they just retired Bachrath by an eyelash. A big first out there for that Viking defense. Jack Dunlap in, takes a strike. He walked in the first. Falls behind 0-1 as Spoors works ahead with a man at second. Here it comes again. Swing and a miss. Nice breaking ball. Dunlap saw something he wanted to take for a ride, but wasn't able to connect. Yeah, that time he was swinging for the downs, but well-located uh, bender that time from Spores, keeping things downstairs. And the 0-2 stays up and away. He thought about going around. That's a very competitive pitch. You know, you get up 0-2, you don't want to get beat with something across the plate, but you want to try to maybe just entice the hitter to maybe leave the zone a little bit. That time he raised the eye level a little bit, just missed it up in the zone. Bouncer to third, but foul. Offenbacher was there. Right now, so important for that Lipsick defense. You know, anything hit on the ground in the holes, you have to dive, get on your bellies, try to keep that ball in the infield so Hanf cannot uh, score from second base. Big one-two pitch coming up for Luke Spores. Pitch. Softly hit to the left side of the infield. Caught by Offenbacher. Throw to second. Doubled off. On the throw, caught by Catarino. Put that an L5-4 to clean up the inning, and it's a scoreless top of the third for Lincoln View. Vikings will bat when we come back. Lincoln View leads Lipsick 1-0, home half of the third, 8-9 at 1, due for head coach Darren Henry and the Lipsick Vikings. Trent Seifger, Luke Spoords, and then Quinn Schrader at the top. Dane Ebel. And he's got his whiffs early. All six outs recorded have been via the strikeout. Got a change in the Lipsick defensive alignments. Get Luke Ballenbacher at first base now. Dunlap out of the four hole. And the 
first pitch to Seifker, take it a strike. Now, once again, Dane Ebel continues to pound the zone with first pitch strikes, continually getting lipstick hitters and negative counts. And the 0 1 down around the knees, but held off. Spores is on deck. Ebel will straighten up. Here's the 1 1 on the way. Swing and a miss. Blasted that one past Seifer. Now he's ahead one and two. Now, oh, good looking heater that time from Ebel. And uh, Seifer a little bit tardy on it. So once again, Ebel. Has a hitter in negative count at one and two. Zips another one past him. Get his seventh strikeout of the day. That's incredible. Eight hitters, uh, seven punch outs for Ebel. But again, we've seen that so many times. You know, last year he averaged uh, north of 10 strikeouts per seven innings pitch. And right now, well on his pace to hit those numbers once again. Working with a one nothing lead as well. Breaking ball bends its way back in to Luke Spoors. Gets ahead 0-1. Garrett, it's one thing being a thrower out there. You've got gas like Ebel does, but he pitches with that. You know, he locates, he mixes things up. He's not afraid to pitch backwards. He's not afraid to attack the inside portion of the zone, the outer portion. That was what makes him such an exceptional pitcher. It's led to a lot of success over the last few years, as we all know. 1-1. One, one. Back the hard stuff stays low and away as it did the time before. Yeah, once again, a quality pitch, but just out of the zone. So Ebo has fallen behind here to Spores 2-1. So right now, if you're Spores, you're not looking for just any strike. You're looking for your strike. Swing and a miss. Goes to 2-2. Two, two. That just seems like Ebo, when he needs to reach back, get a little extra on that fastball, he's able to do that. And that time, well located at the knees. And now that moves the count to two and two. And another swing and a miss. Spoors out over that front leg. Couldn't quite get a really a good swing on that. And it turns into the eighth strikeout for Ebo. So the only Hitter for the Vikings so far that has not been punched out, the DH, Jeremy Tavares, a two-out, two-strike hit the other way in the first. The only hit of the day for the Vikings. Top of the order, Quinn Schrader. Lefty bat rolls this one to second base. Grabbed by Miller, the throw on. Gets the defense involved that time for Lincoln View. And that ends the bottom of inning three, fourth inning. On tap next on WOSN. Moving right along to the fourth inning at Lipson. Lincoln View, right now that one run of the top of the first has held. A one nothing lead. Brandon Renner, Miles Moody, Evan Miller, the three do. See Luke Spoors, and he Kicks and delivers and gets one across to Renner to start the at-bat. He's singled back in the first. A good job by Luke Spores once again. Get that first pitch strike. Starting to sell in. Uh, there's a good-looking uh, fastball right on the outer edge. And he's quickly on top of Renner, 0-2. A run on four hits for Lincoln View. They've left three. Nothing on one hit and one left for the Vikings. And the 0-2 from Spoors, swing and a miss. That's the first strikeout of the night for Spoors. Comes to start the fourth inning. Talked about earlier, Scoop getting stronger as the night has gone on, and that has been certainly to script so far for Spoors. Yeah, he really has. Good looking hammer that time. And again, all predicated by the fact he got on top and got up 0-2. And, and there's a nice base hit there on the first pitch there by Miles Moody who hits a uh, sinking fastball there to left field. So great job once again by Lincoln View to get a runner on here, now an opportunity to extend this 1-0 lead. That's the fifth knock for the Lancers, and they'll turn the lineup to Eben Miller. Crowded out his first time up. Spores to the stretch where he's been strong today. The pitch. Grounded towards third, but wide of the bag. 
And it'll bound down the line. But once again, we're seeing a very aggressive approach by Lincoln View hitters. And I, th I think that's a smart thing because you got a guy like Luke Spores that does such a good job of moving the baseball around. When you get one in your strike zone, you have to go after it and you have to attack. And that time, a pretty good looking swing there by Evan Miller. But uh, just out in front, just a little bit too much as that thing is pulled foul. 0 1 pitch here coming up to Miller. And the 0 1. Taking a second called strike. A great job there by Spore, starting to move the ball around a little bit. Uh, first pitch uh, right on the inner third. Second pitch uh, right on the black there. And he quickly is on top of Evan Miller, 0 and 2. Spore straightens, fires in, it stays high. Moody still planted at first. Chase over Holt is on deck for the Lancers. Spores gives him a peek at first, goes that way on a pickoff try. And a swing and a miss. A uh, great job by Spores. Tremendous sequence. Again, all started with getting that first pitch strike, trying to get those hitters of negative counts. Then once he got to two strikes, that time he elevated the fastball, is able to get Miller to expand the zone. So uh, two outs here for Spores, trying to get out of inning number four unscathed. Another move to first. Overholtz, pop up to the second baseman. 0 for 1. Now two strikeouts for Spoors. He's walked the batter, given up five hits. Goes in tight, Overholt backs away. And Moody gets his lead over at first. Spoors delivers, and it's lined through the hole on the left side in the left. Moves the Lancers up another station and gets it to the number nine hitter, Holden Price. A great at bat by the freshman, Chase Overholt. And again, he got up in the count, so it lets you be a little bit more selective. That time he got a pitch across the plate. Did not miss it, drives it to left field. So Lincoln View now with two runners on, two outs. I think we're going to have a pinch runner coming in here at second base. Don't have a number yet. Looks like it's going to be the 14 of Cal Evans at seconds. So that will take care of Moody at this time. So with this one nothing game, again, two outs. Lincoln View had them full in the first and got just one. Actually, they filled him up after scoring the first run. Spores offers... His first pitch with two on and two out. It goes down low, knocked down by the catcher, Schrader. That's such an important trait to have, to have behind the dish at this level. Well, that's a big-time play there by Schrader. That was a tough pitch to block. He did everything right, got the glove down on the ground, protected the hole. There's a good-looking uh, curveball once again by Spores. He's on top of the freshman Holden Price. Count goes to 1-1 one -one after a swinging strike. Spores with the pitch, and it's popped up. Right side of the infield, second baseman Catarino is over, and he snags it to close the inning. Five total left on for Lincoln View, but they lead it 1-0. We're halfway home, bottom of the fourth on its way next on WOSN. Bottom of the fourth inning at Lipsick, the Vikings hitting, and looking for some rhythm here. Facing Dane Ebel, who is not allowed to, well, much of anybody to get into rhythm today with right now eight strikeouts through his nine recorded outs. He'll face Tommy Offenbacher to start the inning and delivers a strike. Jeremy Tavares, Ethan Zeisloff will follow. Miles Moody re-enters to catch for the Lancers. Keep that battery the same. 0-1. Swing and a miss. 
If you're lipstick, you're hoping maybe the second time through might be a little kinder than the first time through where Dane Ebel struck out eight of the uh, nine hitters the first time through the lineup, and now he's quickly on top of Offenbacher 0-2. Goes off speed and it drops low. Well, just a picture perfect weather day for the early spring out here. And Lipsick goes low and also get a chance to take in the fine facilities that they have put together over the years out here baseball, softball. And the 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. That's number nine for Ebel. Second time Offenbacher has been put down on strikes. Yeah, just high octane gas that time from Ebel. And Offenbacher not able to catch up. So once again, Ebel's able to retire the leadoff man for the Vikings. Now Jeremy Tavares has Lipstick's only hit. First offering from Ebel. Taking a strike and see Tavares back of the box. He's got this the leg lift to time everything up. But takes up high, 1-1. One, one. Well, right now you have to be impressed. All Ebel's not hurt himself. He's had so many first pitch strikes here this afternoon. You know, and that needs to be a lesson for so many young pitchers. When you get ahead in the count, the batting average of the hitter drops significantly. When the batters are ahead in the count, they hit at the high school level just over 350. But when the batter's behind in the count, they're hitting just over 170. That's a difference of 180 points in your batting average by just getting that first pitch strike. And Tavares comes up empty that time. So that holds up to the average, but... Right now, today against Ebel, I, it's been slim to none uh, just with two strikes. But Tavares, though, one of the outliers today. Uh, just incredible, uh, you know, 10 punch outs without a walk. And that's what's so impressive is the walk total at zero right now. Both these pitchers combined for 12 strikeouts, just one walk. We knew it would be this type of game. And, and again, Ebel's going to be a little bit more higher strikeout guy because he's got that real hard fastball. And he locates so well in all four quadrants. Blows by the fastball after getting a first pitch breaking ball to Ethan Zaitslav. He was down looking in the first. And oh. again, when you get guys in two strike counts, that average goes down to about 150 at the high school level when you have two strikes on you. And there's a good looking 0-2 pitch, you know. That, he hit his spot. You know, it was off the plate, but he hit his spot. Again, just trying to entice the hitters to maybe expand his zone, swing at something uh, a few inches off the plate. Swings and misses at the hard stuff. Strikes out the side in the fourth. Stays a 1-0. We can view lead as we head to the fifth on WOSN. one nothing Lincoln View on the Charles River scoreboard. Charles River in Spencerville, Premier Pharmaceutical and Chemical Research Facility, Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more to apply today at jobs.criver.com as Dane Ebel, after doing a lot on the mound, double-digit strikeouts, adds another run to the Charles River scoreboard by launching one over the right field fence to make it 2 nothing. Well, oh, have a day, Dane Ebel. That time, once again, we've talked about that aggressive uh, approach by the Lincoln View hitters. That time, Ebel uh, sitting dead red right away, gets a fastball, and credit to Ebel. He does not miss it. He gets all that one, and that clears the fence out there in right center field in a big insurance run right there for the Lancers. Luke Spores delivers the next one, fouled off by Caden Half. Austin Buckrath. Luke Ballenbacher to follow. Fifth inning over at Lipsick. And the next pitch by Spoors. Inside, it hits Hamp. Second time on base. Sack butt, a single. Now hit by pitch for Hamp and makes him officially two for two or make that one for one of the book. And it helps the OBP. 
A great job by Hanf. You know, a lot of guys will really make a huge effort to get out of the way. That time, uh, you know, he turned enough, so he's not going to get called back there in the box for not making an attempt, but he certainly uh, made sure that ball was going to hit him. And now uh, Lincoln View with the chance to put up a crooked number. Swing and a miss by Bachrath. Kind of rose up on that swing. Eyes might have got a little too big at the pitch offered there. That was a little up, but Spurs gets this, the empty swing. 0-1, popped up foul this way, and it's going to stay out. It's 0-2 for Spurs. He has two strikeouts. He's held lips or may held Lincoln View to the six hits, the two runs, walked one, hit a batter. Straightens up in his 0-2 pitch. Hit up the middle, and that's going to get through. Just past the shortstop, Tyler Lammers, and that puts Lancers on first and second now. Second hit of the day for Bachrath, one of three, or two of three now. Yeah, great job by Bachrath once again. He's got a beautiful swing, and again, his key is he's got to stay in the zone. When he gets a good pitch, he's not going to miss it very often. That one hit on the screws. He turns that baseball around, and now Lincoln View really has something brewing here in the fifth inning. After the leadoff homer, they now have first and second. Still no one out. And right now, Lipsick has to find a way to minimize things like they did back in inning number one. Yeah, looking back on how they've been able to do that is critical. They've stranded five in the game already through the first four. And now Spores... Task with the middle of this lineup. This is the first at bat, though, for Luke Ballenbacher. Went in for Jack Dunlap. He walked and lined into that inning ending double play in the third. You know, Spores had great success there in that second, third, fourth inning, but the, the key denominator in all three of those innings, he did not get to a three ball count. So, so important, but right now, the third time through, Lincoln View seeing the baseball awfully well right now. They're getting some quality swings. And now if you're uh, sports, you just have to find a way to go out there and compete and just try to get them to hit your pitch. He'd love to get that double play ball right here. Spores delivers, and he gets it over for a strike to even it up one and one. Lead off home run, hit better, and a single to start the fifth inning. 2 nothing on the Charles River scoreboard. This one's hit the short. Could be two. The shortstop, Lammers, goes to third for the, the lead runner. Force out. Goes 6-5 to five in the book for out number one. Bolenbacher on first on a fielder's choice, and Bachrath the second. Oh, nice job there by Tyler Lammers to uh, get the lead runner. Didn't fit, feel he had enough time to turn two, so he made sure he got the lead runner out. It still keeps the double play in order. The only thing you'd like to see, you'd like to see maybe uh, Tommy Ock Offenbach there at third base, arm fake to first base to maybe catch the runner at second, round in the base, and maybe pick behind him. But a nice play there by Lipsick. They need another double play ball right here. Brandon Renner watches one up and away. Ball one, he's one of two. Single and a strike out of this one. We're in the top of the fifth. 1-0, swinging miss for runner. Miles Moody on deck. Renner, honorable mention last year in the Northwest Conference. Uh, he also had a hit in the RBI in that state championship game a year ago. And there he fights off a, a tough slider there on the outer edge. And he's fallen behind Spores here, one and two. Spores back on the rubber, looks back at second. And he comes home. Taken for a call, third strike. Renner down on K's for the second time today. One of three now with two strikeouts. The third of the game for the pitcher, Spores. Oh, wow, what a great pitch again by Spores. You know, you talk about hitting spots. Uh, that time he painted one right on that outer edge. Huge punch out, but not out of the woods yet. And the first one to Moody goes up and in, bending him back. There's a base empty here for Lincoln View, but Spores looking to get away unscathed again. 
This is lined through the left side of the infield into left. Runner Bachrath hits third, coming on in. He'll score standing. Throw home, cut off by the first base with Lammers. It's an RBI two-out knock by Miles Moody, his second hit of the game. It's a 3-0 Lincoln View lead. A uh, clutch two-out hit there by Miles Moody. The sophomore, he's able to drill that into left field and just no chance for Caleb Ellerbrock to throw out uh, the speedy Caden Hamp there. And uh, Lincoln View's put up a crooked number here. They now extend their lead 3-0. They'd still like to maybe scratch another run or two across here at two outs. This is popped up right behind third. The shortstop, Lammers, drifts over, has it on the cut of the grass. That takes care of Lincoln View in the top of the fifth inning, but they get two. They expand their lead to 3 nothing on the Charles River scoreboard. We'll take a timeout return for Lipsick's turn to hit here in inning five. Bottom five at Lipsick, the Vikings... Hitting against Lincoln View's Dane Ebel. He's up to 11 strikeouts in the game. Caleb Ellerbrock, Tyler Lammers, Adam Lammers will be the three to face him. And there's a bunt up the third base side, picked by Bachrath. The throw to first in time to get Ellerbrock with the success rate of the strikeouts for Ebel. Good place for that. The check the pulse of the defense and maybe leg out an infield single, but Ellerbrock is down to snap the frame. I love what Ella Brock did right there. Try to push a bunt, maybe just try to find a way to uh, shake up Dane Ebel, who's been lights out, but a tremendous play by Austin Bachrath there at third base. That was highway robbery. That looked like a base hit off the bat, but he anticipated that it was up in the grass, and as soon as he saw it square, boy, he was charging hard there, makes an outstanding play. 1-0 from Ebel is in there to Tyler Lammers. Right now, Lipsick has had their struggles over the years here against this uh, Lincoln View team, uh, you know, putting up some numbers. You know, last year we mentioned it in the regular season game, they were blanked by Lincoln View 4-0. They were beaten in the uh, regional semi 8-1. And then two years ago in the reg regional semi, they were shut out 5-0 uh, by Lincoln View. So just one run in their last uh, four outings thus far. This one's going to be lifted in the Center field, a long run in for Holden Price. He nearly didn't quite get to that one, but the first ball out of the infield in terms of a play made by a defender for Lincoln View. Turns into the second out. Now Adam Lommers is up. A tremendous play by the freshman Holden Price. He had to go a long way to track that baseball, but again, he anticipates so well. And uh, that time, not only did he anticipate, got a good reaction off the bat there, and he takes away a base hit there, and Ebel continues to uh, roll. Lammers takes a strike, 0 for 1 with a strikeout in this game. Takes a second one there. Everyone in this Lipstick lineup has been k at least once. How many times have we mentioned 0 oh, 2 count to these uh, Lipstick hitters? And there, uh, Ebel is able to uh, get Lammers to expand the zone there. So he has his first punch out of the inning, his 12th of the afternoon. And right now, it's uh, been all Lincoln View 3 0 here through five innings. Another 1 2 3 inning. That's 13 in a row down by Ebel. We head for the six and a 3 0 Lincoln View lead on WOSN. Tab of the sixth, and uh, Lincoln View on top, 3 0 on the Charles River scoreboard, and a new arm for the Lipsig Vikings. Trent Seifker delivers high the chase overholts for ball number one. Seifker was in center, he comes in to pitch. Zill one is delivered in there. With that change, Caleb Ellerbrock slides over from left field to center. And Gavin Bryan into the game in left field where Spoor's spot in the lineup will be vacated. At least that's the way we deduce it at the moment. Here's the 2-1 from Seifger that goes behind overhaul and actually might have got a piece of the jersey and he'll get the base a pitch early. Second hit batter of the game for Lipsick's staff. And Luke Spoor's 
Gave him five innings. Held Lincoln View to three runs. And one more important piece on the stat line there, Scoop, is he ended up stranded seven total on the day. Yeah, it was a quality start, you know. Uh, you know, this is a Lincoln View team that can put some big numbers up on the boards. He had three strikeouts, one walk. Here's a nice sack bunt uh, put down that's going to easily advance uh, C or I'm sorry, it's going to advance Overholt there in a scoring position. Holden. So once again, great job there by Holden Price, a freshman, playing those small ball, very smart here. You just want to extend the lead. That's always your goal as a coach, extend leads. And right now they'd love to tack on one more to this 3-0 advantage. Here comes Dane Ebel. A double and a homer in this one. He scored two of the three runs for the Lancers. First pitch, popped him up. Foul ground, third base side. Offenbacher goes over, squeezes it home, and that is out two. Oh, great job there by the sophomore Tommy Offenbacher over there just to take charge of that baseball. That was kind of that area where the pitcher, catcher, or third baseman could take, but certainly the third baseman's ball did everything right. And there's a big second out for that Viking defense. Now Siefker delivers to... Uh, Caden Half pops him up behind home. Getcher gives it a look. Quinn Trader quickly will run out of space. So it goes 0-1. Yeah, great job by Seifker. Again, attacking the zone early. Trying to keep it a 3-0 game right here. He'll straighten up with a runner on second and two outs. The pitch. Line towards second, big hop for Lommers. He has it high, throw, pulls the first baseman off the bag. Throw home as the play continues. And Overholt, great base running with two away, just keeps on moving. The air at short on the throw allows that run to come on in. Looked like a inning and a ground down gives Lincoln View a gift run. Yeah, great job by the freshman Overholt running hard all the way. If you're not running hard all the way on that, you're anticipating a routine 6-3. You're sitting at third base right now, but right there, that's an important run there for the Lancers as they uh, tack one on with two outs. Next offering is fouled off by Buckrath. Got a couple of singles in this one. Two for three. Caden Hamp off of first. And Trent Seifker has his signal. He's ready. 0-1. Goes high. Hamp stays at first. Vikings have to... Right now they've got just six outs to work with offensively. What is now a four-run game. See if they can keep it right there as Seifker delivers low. Lincoln View got one of the first. It stayed that way until the fifth when they posted two and got another here in the sixth. And the offering. That goes low. Knocked down by Quinn Schrader behind the plate. He has done a really solid job behind the, the plate. It's a deep backstop here at Lipsick. Yeah, that's so important. You have so much room to work with. It makes uh, catching that much more important. You have to limit those free bases. 3-1 goes down and in. It puts runners on first and second now. Just the second walk issued by Lipsick pitching today. Bolenbacher stands in now. His second plate appearance. And Seifer's first pitch to him outside. And Schrader that time, nice backhanded stab. Keep the runners placed at first and second base. Yeah, another big play there by the backstop there. Just trying to uh, keep things in front of you, trying to uh, make that force at any base apply. There's a good-looking pitch there right on the inside corner from Trent Seifer to even up the count at 1-1. On one pitch, slow roll to the third, picked up by Offen, 
Bocker, and he throws it on to first to end the inning. Good 5-3 put out to close it out. Lincoln View strands two more. They do get another run, and we head for the home half of the six and a 4 nothing Lincoln View lead. Dane Evil back on the hill for Lincoln View, working with a 4 nothing lead. First pitch to Trent Seifer goes down low for a ball. Ebel has sat down 13 in a row since a two-out single in the first before Lipsick. In the process, he's struck out 12. Next pitch stays low, 2-0. And right now, if you're evil, you just want to pitch with the lead. You know, you want to try to get those first pitch strikes to continue here. You just try to be efficient here through uh, the first five innings. Very efficient. Uh, I had for just 65 pitches uh, through five innings. And that's impressive when you have 12 strikeouts. When you have that many strikeouts, you're usually going to be one of those high-pitched guys. But he has not been outside the zone too much. We mentioned how many times he's got hitters in 0-2 counts. Right now, uh, for the first time today, he's down 3-0. There's a get-me-across fastball for 3-1. See if you're old for one with a strikeout. And Ebel kicks and it, sends it in. Goes low, first walk of the day. Good Seifger on, that snaps that strand of 13 straight. Uh, great job by Seifger. You know, right now, you're down four runs, so you can't get it back on one swing when you're leading off the inning, so you have to find a way to set the table, and that's exactly what the junior Trent Seifker did. And now that brings up uh, the nine spot here, where I think we have the... Uh, I think it's a Gavin Bryan up to yep. bat, if I believe. Yep. Left New fielder. Came in for spores. Yep. In there in left field and takes a pitch low. So Ebel, see if he can find his command again. Fires one over to first. Just two base runners in the game for Lipsick. Single in the first, and they the leadoff walk here in the sixth. 1 0. Bunch shown and pulled back, pops off the mid of the catcher, Moody, but he's able to corral it quickly. A smart play by Seifer. You know, a lot of times you might try to go on that dirt ball read, but the fact that you're late in and you're down four, you just cannot uh, afford to give up an out on the base pass. And right now you want to force Ebel to uh, find the zone here as he's struggling. There he gets that uh, nice fastball right across the heart of the plate to get the count to two and one. Nobody out, a no runner on. Next pitch. Inside a portion and called for a, the second strike. Two and two. Third baseman Bachrath now backs up. A couple of steps even with the bag at third. Pickoff move to first. Seifker back for the Vikings. You know, Ebel still has plenty of mustard on that baseball, throwing awfully hard here in the sixth inning. And this is one of those games, I think, with the temperature and his pitch count, Probably going to try to get all seven innings out of him here if he can today if you're Coach Fishpaw. Fouls it off. Goes to two and two. Lancer is looking to spring ahead. Two and zero oh in the conference. Check swing. and Brian went around a little too far. He'll be strikeout number 13. For Dane Ebel, and that's the first out of the sixth. Oh, big punch out right there by Ebel. You have to really uh, make sure you don't get a couple guys on when the lineup's going to turn over here to Quinn Schrader, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout looking for his first hit of the afternoon. Pickoff move won't do anything there. No runs on a hit for, for Lipsick, Lincoln View. Four on eight. Evil delivers a strike. Evil has two of those hits on the other end. Double and a homer to go with the brilliant pitching so far today. 0-1. Breaking ball swing and a miss. Schrader kind of golfing one. Now spinning towards the basement for 0-2. Evil ready, and the two-strike offering. Off the end of the bat, foul rolled up the third base side. He 
Here's Ebel's two strike offering again. And it's on the ground towards short, bobbled by the shortstop, and a throw by Overholt will be late. Yeah, fun score on that one. Should be, should go down as an error on Overholt, but tough spot for it. Actually, might be one of the rare fielder's choice errors. That you see from time to time. Yeah, great job by Schrader just uh, putting the ball in play, something that uh, Lipsick has struggled with here this afternoon against Ebel, who gets been uh, lights out. Tommy Offenbacher fouls back the first pitch, goes down to old one. Vikings with a runner on first and second. 0-1. And delivers a breaking ball outside. Ebel with more traffic in this inning that he's had to deal with all day. Now Offenbacher is 0-2 with two strikeouts. Cuts through the 1-1 pitch. Now right now, if you're Ebel, you don't want to mess around. You want to attack the hitter. You do not want to put the tying run up to plate here. Especially in uh, Tavares, who's got great power. One and two, left a little off the outside edge. Offenbacher stays in there, two and two. That's a great pitch uh, just off the outer edge, but a great hold there by Offenbacher. Ebel's next offering. Swing and a miss, strike three, 14 strikeouts for Ebel. You know, that time Evil just reached back, put a little bit of extra juice on that one. And again, that's something we've seen over, from him over the years. He can just kind of bow his neck when he needs to and, and try to toughen up some difficult spots. And that was a big one right there. He did not want to go three ball count to Offenbacher. And that's a big second punch out of the inning for Evil. Jeremy Tavares, a single and a strikeout of this one. He's the number three hitter, stands in, fastball stays hot. One ball, no strikes, runner on first and second for Lipsick. Vikings threatening here in their half of the sixth. Right now with just four outs to use and down by four. Tavares takes a strike that time, evens it up. Uh, good job that time by Evil. That time he came with the 1-0 uh, slider there. Is able to paint that outside corner. That's a big pitch to even the count up at one apiece. And Tavares takes again and holds off on one, floating low and away. Uh, good looking hammer that time. It started out across the middle of the plate. But by the time uh, that ball was caught there by Moody, just out of the zone on the outer edge. The 2-1 this time, off the end of the bat towards short, Overholt charges, gloves, he throws, and a good stretch, but an even better leg out there by Tavares for an infield single to fill the bases for the Vikings. A oh, tremendous job that time by Tavares. You know, that one, he just legged out. A pretty nice play there by Overholt there at shortstop, but uh, he had to go the hole just enough and allowed Tavares there to leg that out. So right now the tying run comes to the plate. And Ethan uh, Zeisloft right here trying to get a base knock. Cuts through the first pitch. Now Tavares with two hits. Actually, he's got both in the book for the Vikings. A one. Zeisloft takes it low. They've both been legit. Little shot the other direction in the first inning on a breaking ball and leg down a ground ball to shortstop. One and one now to Zeisloff. Popped it up behind home. They'll sneak out beyond the fence. And we're back to uh, a good looking swing by Zeisloff that time. Uh, he was not holding back on the 1 1 pitch, but now he finds himself in hole 1 2. This is where Ebel's been lights out tonight. And trying to extend that zone a little bit, but it goes just away to even it up 2-2. Two, two. two outs, bases loaded. 
Right now, you don't want to go into a three-ball count where the runners will be in motion with two outs, so you have to attack the zone here in 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball, slow roller to third, fielded by Bachrath. He'll just take a couple steps to his right, hit the sack, and that ends the inning. On the fielder's choice, six in the books, and it's 4-0 Lincoln View on WOSM. Top of inning seven, Lincoln View. Last chance to add a 4 0 lead. Second inning of relief for Trent Seifer. Lancers have scored in each of the last two innings. Brandon Renner, Miles Moody, Evan Miller, the three do against Trent Seifer. Out of his windup, first pitch. Rolled up the first baseline. We're going to go wide of the bag foul. Yeah, Garrett in that last inning. Uh... Lincoln View was able to score without the benefit of a hit. They took advantage of a hit batsman, had a great sack bunt by the nine-hitter Holden Price, and then took advantage of uh, the only miscue of the day by the Vikings. And also had a walk. And, uh, again, uh, three freebies added up to one run there. It's certainly an important one for uh, Lincoln View. They'd love to tack on another insurance right here in the seventh. 1-1 one, one is fouled off. There's some action for Lincoln View throwing. Dane Ebel has taken them six innings without yielding a run. See what the choice is for Coach Fishball in the bottom half of this, of this inning. One and two. Past the, the mound. Slow roll to the second. Going to be a tough play and be an infield hit for the Lancers. Isaiah Conorino could quite get up there, and that's the second time today. I mean, Lincoln View's kind of had a slow roller past the hill that resulted in an infield hit. Yeah, great job again by Renner, who now has uh, two hits during the afternoon. And again, you know, once the ball clears the pitcher there, that's just a tough play in high school to throw anybody out. And Renner with decent wheels, legs out infield single. So once again, the leadoff man aboard here for the Lancers. Moody bunts it. And we're gonna get it's gonna get called back. Might have been picked up foul. Yeah, he's gonna be out. Uh, that time the ball was able to uh, hit uh, Moody there outside of the batter's box. So that's a big break for Le for uh, Lipsick. Not only is Moody out, but that's gonna force Renner back to first base. It looked like a pretty nice bunt, and it was, but the mistake was made when he uh, kicked the baseball there with his foot mm. out of the box. So a huge break for the Vikings. We'll see if they can take advantage and throw up a zero here in the seventh here with one out. Brings Evan Miller up, 0 for 3. Seifer straightens up, fires in, in the dirt. Wind continues to blow out straight to center. Hasn't been much of a factor. I haven't had a ton of baseballs hit in the air. 1-0 swing and a miss. A pickoff behind the runner at first. Quinn Schrader, a good strong throw, but not able to get Renner. Well, that's one of those scenarios right there why you want a left-handed first baseman. He can kind of apply that quick tag in motion that time you saw. Uh, Lammers had to turn around. The ball clearly uh, beat uh, Renner to first base. That comes in too tight, hits Miller. He'll go to first. Third batter for Lincoln View today that's been plunked. Third inning in a row that's happened as well. Chase Overholt next. He got hit and scored last inning. One for two with a single in the game. Takes low. Backhanded stand by Schrader. Four nothing on that Charles River scoreboard. They are hiring. Jobs.criver.com. Find those job opportunities at the expanding Premier Pharmaceutical and research facility in Northwest Ohio. Slow roller to third. Going to put overhold at first. 
little 5U there to get the lead runner at third. Miller moves up to second base. There are now two away for the Lancers. That's a great play by Tommy Offenbacher once again there at third base. That's why it's so important as a defender, you have to know where the speed's at, not just at the plate, but on the bases. That was one of those slow rollers, but he knew he had enough time to go back to third base, take himself. And again, that's a big second out here. You know, Lipstick uh, trying to keep this game right where it's at. They've got a lot of work to do as it is, but you don't want to make it any more difficult than it is. Pinch runner on for Lincoln View. Dalton Ellerbrock heads out to second, while Holden Price will dig in with two away. Overholt gets his lead from first. And the Seifker pitch up high for a ball. Single runs in the first and sixth, the two in the fifth for the Lancers. Next pitch by Seifer, popped up foul, first base in, and it'll drift back and out of play. You have to love how this uh, Lincoln View offense just tries to grind things out. They've had runners on base in six of the seven innings. They constantly put pressure on you. We've seen their aggressiveness uh, on the base pass. We've also seen it at the plate. You know, big reason they got to that state championship game a year ago. One and one, cut through and miss, and a pickoff move to first. That time, they will get over Holt, a 2-3 pickoff. Ends the inning. We head for the home half of the seventh. Will that defensive play catalyze the, the Lipstick offense? We'll find out next on WOSN. Bottom of the seventh inning, last cracks for the Lipstick Vikings. Caleb Ellerbrock, Tyler Lommers, Adam Lommers. Two against Dane Ebel. Six scoreless with 14 strikeouts and a walk to this point. First pitch fouled off to the left. Lancers four runs on nine hits. Lipsick nothing on two. Lancers have also left 10 on base. Good job by Lipsick's pitching staff this afternoon. Next one goes down and in. Viking pitchers have had to get around some traffic, but they've been able to limit the damage, keep it to four. And the 1-1. One -one. Breaking ball will come back on down and for a called second strike to Ellerbrock. Lancers looking for a win number six on the young season. Breaking ball, cut and miss, but it's going to get away from the catcher, Moody. This will put a runner on first. That deep backstop, we haven't seen it become much of a factor all day, but there is its first iteration, and Lipsick left him loaded last inning, and now Ebo back with a runner at first with nobody out. And that will be the 15th strikeout of the afternoon for Ebel, but to Ellerbrock uh, running that out on the wild pitch, we'll get first base, so a break for Lipsick. We'll see if they can take advantage here. Number seven hitter, Tyler Lammers, step into the plate. Takes the first pitch strike. Now you would expect right here, Lipsick maybe going to see a strike here. Just try to find a way to get freebies. You're probably not going to get four runs on six hits here against Ebel, but you might be able to get a couple hits, maybe a couple walks, put some pressure on this Lincoln View defense. And again, uh, you know, Lipsick's been a team so much success over the season. You know they're going to keep battling here. Boy, it's been awfully tough here against Dane Ebel, who's been lights out. 1-1, one, one, fouled off. Lombers down, down one and two. Ebel looking for another out. All right, now if you're Lombers, you have to find a way just to shorten up here, go a two-strike approach, put it in play, and again, put some pressure in that Lincoln View defense, who has not had a lot of action do those 15 strikeouts. Check swing, but it went too far. That's strikeout 16, and the first down of the seventh. Lincoln View has Lipsick on the ropes still. Here's Adam Lommers, 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Ground ball could also now do this. Evil's first pitch. Backs back Lommers and gets the strike called as well. A uh, good-looking fastball by Ebel. He's not just uh, throwing strikes, but he's painting corners that time, the inside corner. And quickly, once again, 
Finds himself on top of Adam Lommers, 0-2. One down. Abel so far has two hit the Vikings. The pitch. Breaking ball stays up. Yeah, great idea to change the eye level. Now look for either the curve ball or slider coming up here on the one two. Swing and a miss. Two strikes. Vikings down to their final out. Well, right now, Ebel would like to get that uh, four strikeout in. He's got three right now, but uh, just two outs thanks to the uh, the wild pitch there to start things out. But right now, uh, he's certainly in control, and he has not lost an ounce off that fastball. Still throwing awfully hard. First pitch cut and miss by Trent Seifger. These are the only outs that have been put into play. Final out of the third inning was a ground out to second base. First out of the fifth was a ground out to third. And a fly out to center was the second out of inning five. And here's a comebacker to the hill that Ebel takes care of himself. A 17 strikeout shutout is the final line for Dane Ebel today. He two hits Lipsick, walks one. Again, fans 17 and a dominant performance for the Lincoln View Lancers. And that brings the final score on the Charles River scoreboard to 4-0 Lincoln View over Lipsick. An impressive win here for Lincoln View. We talked about how these teams finished 1-2 and two in the Northwest Conference a year ago. Here they are early season again. A very important game, but the senior Dane Ebel steps up. The impressive part of that, obviously the 17 strikeouts, but just as equally impressive, just one walk. You know, either one of those are going to win you a lot of ball games. But again, uh, this is a Lincoln View team going to win a lot of games. I think you can say the same about Lipsick. They have ran into some awfully tough pitching, I think, early on in their season. This is a team that's going to continue to get better. The team's going to win a lot of ball games before it's all said and done. Yeah, Ebel also went two for four at the plate with two extra base hits and a home run. Lincoln View, or Lipsick, had both hits came out of Jeremy Tavares, two for three on the day here today. 4 nothing at Lincoln View. Again, the final score, 6-1 or six and one, Lincoln View. Lipsick falls to one and four. That Charles River scoreboard tonight brought to you by, again, Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They are expanding. Learn more and apply at one of their open positions today at jobs.criver.com. Well, Scoop, that'll bring us to a close here tonight. A good game, good weather, just all in all, a, a well-pitched game for Ebel. Uh, Lipsick gave them everything that they could as well and you know left five on the base in the process despite just the two hits and the one walk. I think both teams can take a lot of positives out of this game. You know, Lipsick going to be disappointed in the scoreboard. But again, when you hold a Lincoln View to four runs, that tells you, tells you you've got the pitching to keep yourselves in a lot of ball games this year. And of course, Lincoln View, they just somehow find a way to reload. This is not a team that's in a rebuild year. This is a team that continues to reload, and uh, they'd love to get their third consecutive Northwest Conference Championship this season, but a lot of baseball to be had between now and then. Yeah, they have a 2-0 and start to that journey as well. He's Scoop Miller. I'm Garrett Mansfield. Thanks to everybody here at Lipsick, Coach Fishpaul at Lincoln View, and of course, Coach Henry here for the Vikings. We're saying it. From the whole crew, Scoop and Garrett saying good night on WOSN. Thank you for watching High School Baseball here this evening.